Uh, good morning. It's uh, a little different for me to be in this position, but I'm, I'm glad to be up here. Uh, Pastor Cassie is at the uh, Senate Assembly this morning, and we wish them and her well. Um, this would normally be our Communion Sunday, but because I'm here and not really able to administer community, communion, I knew I was going to stumble at least once, communion properly, uh, we're going to push that to next week, so no communion today. Uh, we have a funeral coming up, sadly, today, this week. A funeral for Alyssa Carey. She's the daughter of Kay and da uh, Dale Carey, and the grad granddaughter of Jackie Hagen. It's going to be here at Peace on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Uh, Pastor Cassie has asked me to announce, uh, please sign up your kids and grandkids for Sunday and Wednesday programming. Our children and youth activities begin in September, and we're looking for teachers for each group. Let Pastor Cassie know if you are interested. 
The next announcement I'm adding, um, and it comes with a little bit of sadness and a little bit of regret, but we have a policy in place in terms of mask and COVID, and I, would hope, I was hoping that we would never have to address this again. And our policy states that when Cass County's 14-day positivity rate reaches 5%, we mandate, we don't mandate, but we do ask people to wear masks to service and we try to dis socially distance as best we possible. On Friday, I looked to see where it was at and the number was 4.8%. I didn't dare look yesterday <laughs> and I didn't look this morning. But as you've been watching the news and hearing, our COVID numbers in our community are on their way up. So this is just a little bit of a warning Next week, we might have to go back to wearing masks, and we hope not. Uh, we pray that the COVID will uh, go away or become under control, but there's that possibility. So I wanted to make you aware of it. Now, as you well heard, we have Braden back with us today. He hasn't been with us for quite a while. And we are truly blessed by his, uh, his abilities. He has been on some remarkable adventures, and, and instead of me trying to stumble over and explain them, I've asked him to come up and give us an idea of what he's been up to. There was no way that I could make Dakota try to remember all the countries that I was going to list. Um, so I think the last time I saw a lot of you was at about Christmas time-ish or so, um, and ever since then I've been doing just, just non-stop just adventures all over the place. I'm trying to remember kind of roughly in order, just since the beginning of this year or so, um, I spent the new year out in um, Ukraine, out in Chernobyl. Um, but then uh, as the year kept going, I went to uh, Ukraine, to the United Arab Emirates, um, and then uh, I went to Ethiopia, I went to Sudan, I went to go stay at Osama bin Laden's old house, um, and then uh, I went over there from uh, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, um, and then I went down to Afghanistan. I was in Afghanistan right in the middle of the, the troop pullout. Um, and then I went back to Dubai, over to Jordan as all the Israel stuff was heating up. Um, and then I went back now over to Tajikistan, uh, Georgia, Armenia, uh, back up to Iceland, uh, and just just all over the place. But um, uh, I was coming back over here um, for the summer. I love being here in the summertime. Minnesota, of course, is great in the summertime. Um, and uh, of course, I wanted to come and see all of you guys again because it's, it's, it's been so long. But um, uh, I'm really, really happy to be back. Um, some of the other just just random stuff. Um, if you come talk to me afterwards, I'll, I'll, I'll come elaborate some of it. But um, some of the other crazy stuff that's happened is that uh, um, in Afghanistan, I was detained by the Afghan army because they thought I was a spy, um, which is a, a really long story. Um, like I said, um, I was out in uh, Sudan staying at Osama bin Laden's old house. Um, while I was out there in the Sahara, um, I was camping up by the, the northern part of the Nile, finding some old ancient pyramids. Um, I got COVID all the way out there, of all places, um, which wasn't very fun to get it in that country. Um, but uh, everywhere in between on a few safaris and all kinds of crazy stuff. So, um, but I'm happy to be back. And uh, I think I'll probably be home for like something like two weeks or three weeks, which is a long time for me. <laughs> and then um, uh, picking the next adventure. The goal is to go back out towards India but it all kind of depends on um, uh, what the COVID situation is looking like because, uh, you know, the Delta variant out there and um, all kinds of stuff. So I have some concerts planned for later on this year. So hopefully everything gets back to normal. So good to see you all. Okay, let us set our, set our hearts and minds on worship. And we will begin with a confession and forgiveness, which you may find in your bulletin and on page 94 in your hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and, in, and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, 
word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. God, who is rich in mercy and loved us even when we were dead in sin, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power of the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn number 838, Beautiful Savior. Would you please stand, if you're able, for our prayer of the day? Lord, draw your church together, O God, into one great company of disciples, together following our teacher, Jesus Christ, into every walk of life, together serving in Christ's mission to the world, and together witnessing to your love wherever you will send us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. You may be seated. Our first lesson for today is from John, the 15th chapter, verses 12 through 17. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have been made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in his name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. Our psalm for today is from Psalm 118, uh, starting with the 21st verse. Please read it responsibly with me. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. Verse 
Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festive procession with the branches up to the horns of the altar. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We'll now have a musical uh, message from Braden.
Thank you, Braden. That was truly beautiful. I told Braden before I, we started this morning, I knew he was going to play Claire de Lune. Um, I'm a big classical music, music fan, and Claire de Lune is one of my all-time, if not the most favorite piece of music, so thank you for blessing us with that. All right, our second lesson for today is from Ephesians chapter 3, starting with the 16th verse. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, that he may, grant, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with the power through his, his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Here ends our lessons. Now we're about to, uh, Jeremy's going to run a tape from our bishop, um, Bishop, uh, there it is, <laughs> Lineseth, and it's uh, from the Lutheran uh, ELCA bishop. I would like to forewarn you after that gets done, I want to say a few words myself. And I will also tell you, I have no idea what she's going to talk about. <laughs> so, anyway, go ahead, run it, Jeremy. Dear friends, grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I greet you as your bishop. And I greet you on behalf of the 190 congregations of the Eastern North Dakota Synod. It is Synod Assembly weekend, and chances are, if you are experiencing this sermon from your home congregation, then likely there are others from your congregation, hopefully, who are at Synod Assembly this weekend. So it's really great that we can all be together in these various ways on this particular weekend. And it's very intentional that I greet you on behalf of the 190 congregations, because it's important for us, especially on this weekend, to remember that we are joined with others who do this mission and ministry together, that each in our own place and location, we are living out our mission as followers of Jesus Christ, but that we are all doing this together in various ways. So if there are ever times where you feel alone as a congregation, know that there are so many others who are there. And my hope and my prayer is that as we journey together, that we will get to know each other more and more and be connected together more and more. So it is indeed Synod Assembly Weekend, and our theme this year is Live in Love. It comes from our mission statement. When I first was working with the staff and thinking about a theme for this year's Synod Assembly, I pitched the idea that I'd really like for us to kind of take the mission statement apart and live into a part of it each year to kind of unfold it and examine it and look and explore together and see how we each experienced it and see it in new ways and share our reflections together as we journey in this shared life together. And so, as I thought about it, our mission statement starts out, Jesus Christ calls us to live in love. Now, we could have started with just Jesus Christ because that is where we start. And if we did something with Jesus Christ calls us, that also would be great. But live in love felt like just the right phrase for this year. Because as I look back on the last year, year and a half, whatever you wanna call it, I'm sure it goes back longer than that and really all of humanity, living in love is sometimes a gift and sometimes a challenge. And I think particularly over the last couple of years, it has been challenging. How do we live in love as people of God? How do we live in love in our communities in our families, in our churches. What does it mean to live in love? I hope that you will be exploring that this coming year. 
and pondering it and looking for ideas and examples of what it means to live in love. Because Jesus Christ calls us to live in love as we serve, equip, and challenge God's people. That is the mission that unites us together in the Eastern North Dakota Synod. So we have this theme, live in love, and I just started thinking about it and got kind of playful and thought, would it be interesting if, if love were a land we could live in, right? If it's live in love, how do we live in a place called love? So think for a moment about the places you have lived. I've lived in North Dakota and Minnesota, Kentucky and Arizona for a little bit, Connecticut, South Africa, all those places have been wonderful, have been challenging, have formed and shaped me. And there was lots of love, but none of them were the land of love. And of course, I'm just being kind of playful here because I don't know that there is an actual land of love. Although I like to imagine, what would that look like? What would that be like if there was a land we could live in that was love? Well, here's another thing that comes to mind as I have been exploring living in love. And it's actually one of my very favorite books of all time. Now, if you found young adult fantasy through Harry Potter or maybe some of the other great series, maybe this is not your favorite. Maybe it's a little old school, but it is a book that has been so important for me. And that is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. Madeline Langle was an author who wrote all kinds of things. And this was her young people fantasy book about traveling to other galaxies, the hero who's a 13 year old girl named Meg. And it is about the power of love. It is about living in love. So if you don't know the story, the basics are that Meg and their neighbor friend, Calvin, and then Meg's little brother, George Wallace, they are going to travel through galaxies to rescue their father, Meg and um, George Wallace's father, because he has been gone for five years. He was off discovering a new planet, just like everybody's father does, you know, and they were going to try to rescue him because it seemed that something was wrong. And then if you know this story, you know that there's Mrs. Who's It, Mrs. What's It, and, and Mrs. Witch, I almost forgot her name. And these unique characters that also go with them on this journey. And if you haven't read this or watched the movie, I hope that that in and of itself gets you curious enough. Well, they make it finally to a plant, planet called um, Kamazots, which is ruled by an evil force, this disembodied brain called it. And Charles Wallace, there's a lot of things that happen. I'm not giving you a whole synopsis, but for the sake of this sermon, there's this story I want to tell. And that George Wallace ends up um, captivated and really captured his mind and therefore his whole being by this evil force called it. And Meg, who is very close to her brother, is trying, one, she's terribly afraid she's gonna lose him and she needs to get him free. And she realizes the clue to freeing him is the power of love. And so here's a little excerpt from the book. She starts thinking, Charles, Charles, I love you. My baby brother who takes care of me, come back to me. Charles Wallace, come back from it. Come back, come home. I love you. I love you, Charles. Oh, Charles Wallace, I love you. I love you. Charles Wallace, you are my darling and my dear and the light of my life and the treasure of my heart. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Charles. I love you, she cried. And that is what broke Charles Wallace free from this power of this evil a disembodied brain called it that had power over his mind and therefore his whole being. Meg was rooted in love. She knew that it was love that could defeat the power that held her brother. She knew that love is the force that frees people. Well, St. Paul and others in the Bible, but St. Paul wrote about this too 
In the book of Ephesians, the third chapter, he wrote, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of God that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. What an amazing blessing. Now, St. Paul's words are calling us to live in love, to be rooted and grounded in love, to know the love of Christ. And here's the thing. It is so tempting when we think about living in love to make it about what we do. I could come up with ideas about how we live in love, challenge us, encourage us, all of these explorations about how we live in love. And that is important. And we'll be exploring that as well. Those of us at the Synod Assembly, and I hope they bring back stories to share with you. And living in love, our actions is so important. But where does it start? It doesn't start with us. It doesn't start with what we do. The good news is that it starts with the love of God. God is the one who loves first. God is the one who roots and grounds us in his love. God is the one in Jesus Christ who gave the extravagant, abundant love. That is what roots us and grounds us. That is what gives us our identity and our being. And it is from that that the love can overflow to others. It is from that love that we are free to serve our neighbors because we've been set free in love. We don't have to worry about making God happy. That has all been taken care of. We are rooted and grounded in love and set free to love our neighbor, set free to live in love because we start in God's love. And this is your beginning, that God loves you with an overflowing, ridiculously generous, evil-shattering love. You. God loves you. Full stop. It is that simple and it is that complicated. And in Holy Communion, we're in this season of readings about bread and Jesus as the bread of life. And in Holy Communion, when we take the bread and in the wine, we are trusting that proclamation that Jesus is somehow present in, with, and under the elements. And Jesus is present, so it's no longer just bread and wine. And we take it into our bodies. Jesus Christ calls us to live in love. And when we come to the table, Jesus Christ lives in us. So, people of God, be filled with God's holy love. Know that in your body and with every breath, you are filled with the love of Christ, which has no end. May you be rooted and grounded with this radical love as you live in love in this world for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Jeremy, for queuing that up. As I mentioned, I had honestly no idea what Bishop Lineseth was going to say today, and I think I wanted to add to it a little bit here. Uh, Pastor Cassie did send me a link to preview it, but uh, given my technological skills, which are nil at best, I couldn't open it. But if you allow me, I'd like to take this opportunity as your president to either add to her words, and I think my message will add to it a little bit, or address where I think Peace Lutheran Church uh, is at this time and in this place. May the good Lord uh, guide what I'm about to share. May it be in his glory, and may it not be terribly long or long-winded. That was a joke. (laughs) Could you please take another look at your bulletin, the front cover? 
I'd like to direct your attention to that. That kind of captured my imagination, if we will, and captured something I was thinking about before this, and I kind of blended the two. And I thought it was interesting that front cover, we have a wonderful quote from the Bible, which I'll get into, but we also have a picture that, at first glance, didn't seem to go along with the quote. For those of you are, that are watching online, uh, the picture is a silhouette of a man on top of a horse uh, in front of a blue sky, and then a quote that I'm going to get into. Let's start with that picture first. Man on a horse. Now, first of all, full disclosure here, I am not a horse expert. Please don't go thinking that I am, but I am not. And as I'm about to relate, I haven't been on a horse since I was a teenager. And I certainly don't have any special insight into horses and how they think and how they act. But with a lot of you in this room, I know, I grew up with farm connections. And as some of you know, I grew up in Minot, North Dakota. Full disclosure again, notice I said in Minot, for really, I was a town kid. But my grandparents on my mom's side had a farm about eight miles south of Minot, on which they grew small grains like wheat and oats and barley. And I remember they raised cattle, like dairy cattle for a time. And they had some chickens and some pigs. But they also had two horses I remember very, very vividly. The horses were named Trigger and Sugar. Okay, let's date ourselves. Can anyone in the room tell me who was the famous owner of another famous horse named Trigger? <coughs> Excuse me, Roy Rogers. <coughs> Sorry. That's right. Our Trigger was named after Roy Rogers' horse, Trigger. Notice I said our Trigger, for Trigger was a gentle horse who would allow anyone to ride him and was more than happy to allow us to, as kids to approach him and just to pet him. Growing up, all of us kids loved Trigger. Whenever we went out to the farm, which was quite often, us kids would first seek out, seek out our Trigger and we'd see how he was doing almost like we had a conversation with him. Although I don't remember exactly when, I do remember Trigger's passing to be one of great sadness for all of us grandkids. Now, on the other hand, the other horse, my grandparents' horse, was named Sugar. And Sugar was not sweet. There's no way to put this nicely. Sugar was a mean horse. We learned right away as kids to give Sugar a wide berth, which was pretty easy because Sugar wanted nothing to do with us. The only person that could ride Sugar was my mother's younger sister, Nikki. Otherwise, he would stomp and give you, don't you even think about coming closer, whine and whinny. I remember once during my early teens riding the pasture with my aunt, she on Sugar, I on Trigger. What made this particular ride so memorable was that on that outing, I swear Sugar on occasion would try to reach over and bite me on the leg. Yeah, that was Sugar. He's not a happy horse. Okay, you're probably wondering where I'm going with all this. So let's get back to looking now at that quote that's on the front of your bulletin from John. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and bear fruit. It's been said that horses do more of the choosing of their riders than the riders choosing the horse. To be honest, I need to tell you that, that up front that there's quite a difference of opinion on that subject. Who chooses who when it comes to horses and riders? But I'm not going to get into that except to say that in my experience with Tigger and Sugar, they did the choosing. You couldn't ride Trigger, he could ride Trigger because he chose us to ride him. And we couldn't ride Sugar because he only chose one person to be his rider. I truly doubt if it could have been any other way with those two horses. My friends, God does the choosing, and he has chosen you. He has chosen us. Yes, us, Peace Lutheran Church. He's choosing you, and that isn't some abstract you out there in the great general collective. 
It's me, Dakota. It's you. If you're breathing, you have a purpose for which the Lord has picked you to be part of. God's got a plan, and you and I have been chosen by our God, our Lord and Savior, to be part of that plan. Yipes! That truth is empowering, but it's also a little bit frightening, isn't it? For he made you and me and has uniquely shaped us to be part of his design. You and me, we are God's masterpiece. When I was a teacher, I once attended an educational conference I've never forgotten, where the speaker told us that there is evidence that there are at least 104 different areas where an individual can be a, quote, expert in. It was this speaker's view that everybody is an expert in at least one of those areas. In my career as an educator, I came to believe that concept. We are all experts in something because God has made us that way. One of my favorite verses from the Bible is from Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For you probably have heard this one many times. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. God has chosen us to be part of his plans. Wow, think about that. Let that sink in. He chose us, you and me. Often these days I will admit that the news in this time in this place is distressing. I can barely watch the 5.30, 6 o'clock news in most days. COVID seems to be rearing its ugly head again. There's so much division and strife. And heck, I don't know about you, but I don't think my lawn's going to make it through this summer, let alone the farmers and the ranchers who are having to endure this horrible drought. It would be easy, it would be so easy to shake our heads and throw up our collective arms, easy to disengage, to get off the horse and to walk away. But Peace Lutheran Church, that's what we have not been chosen to do. God has appointed us to, according to the quote, to go and bear fruit. We have been chosen to be his light in this time and in this place. How exactly? Well, I don't know. Pastor Lyons have talked about living in love. I think there's answers there. And I think the answer is going to be different for each and every one of us. But I do know that being in God's family, Peace Lutheran Church, affords us the blessing of being one of many trying to serve him. And that's a very, very good thing. I believe that we need to pray and ask God to reveal to us what he has in store for us. After all, you didn't choose him. He chose you. And he has a plan to give you hope and a future. In closing, Peace Lutheran Church, it's not time to ride off into the sunset, but it is time to ride. In God's name, amen. Okay. Get back to my script here. Uh, We have our hymn of the day. Hymn number 631, Love Divine, All Love Excelling.
Okay, would we stand for our reading of the Apostles' Creed, which is found in your bulletin? We confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us have our prayers for the church for this day. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and for all creation. God of wisdom, enlighten your church. Guide theologians, biblical scholars, authors, and cemetery seminary professors as they seek greater knowledge and invite others into deeper understanding. Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to new ideas. Lord, in your mercy, God of hope, be with the voting members of the Eastern North Dakota Senate as they gather in assembly this weekend. Guide their conversations, inspire their decisions, and reveal your plan for the church in our area. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, mend the earth, cool warming oceans and preserve melting ice caps. Reveal new approaches to the ecological challenges we face. Help those dealing with drought and fire. And may I add, Lord, watch over the people of Haiti who are suffering due to earthquake. Lord, in your mercy. God of nations, direct your leaders. Grant them the courage to lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address difficult topics. Guide them in the work of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by mental illness or mired in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to all those who are grieving and all those who suffer. We especially remember today the family and friends of Alyssa Carey. Lord, in your mercy, we lift these and all your prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now have another offering from Braden. You may be seated.
Would you rise for the Lord's Prayer? Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us hear the benediction. Now receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our, hymn, our sending hymn is hymn 540, Go and Make Disciples. Peace and serve the Lord.